Hello everybody. Welcome to number one doctor channel. Today video is about chest trauma, which is part of our playlist called Short Medical Notes. Rib fracture can be deadly in the elderly because of progression of pain hypoventilation, atelectasis, pneumonia. Treat with local nerve block and epidural catheter. Plain pneumothorax results from penetrating trauma, which could be the jagged edge of a broken rib or any of the more common penetrating weapons. There is moderate shortness of breath, and one side of the thorax has no breath sounds and is hyper-resonant to percussion. Get chest x-ray, place chest tube, upper, anterior, and connect to underwater seal. Hemothorax happens the same way, but affected side will be dull to percussion. It is diagnosed by chest x-ray. Blood needs to be evacuated to prevent development of empyema, thus a tube placed low is needed, but surgery to stop the bleeding is seldom required. The lung is the usual bleeding source, and it will stop by itself, low pressure system. If we get 1500 ml or more of blood when the chest tube is inserted or more than 600 ml is collected in the ensuing 6 hours, we realize that a systemic vessel is lacerated. This is typically an intercostal artery and video-assisted thoracotomy will be needed to control the bleeding. In severe blunt trauma to the chest there may be obvious injuries, plus hidden injuries. The latter have to be monitored for blood gases and chest x-ray to detect developing pulmonary contusion, cardiac enzymes, troponins, and electrocardiogram, ECG, to detect myocardial contusion or actively sought at the outset, traumatic transection of the aorta. Sucking chest wounds are obvious from physical exam, as there is a flap that sucks air with inspiration and closes during expiration. Untreated, it will lead to deadly tension pneumothorax. First aid is with occlusive dressing that allows air out, taped on three sides, but not in. Flail chest occurs with multiple rib fractures that allow a segment of the chest wall to cave in during inspiration and bulge out during expiration, paradoxic breathing. The real problem is the underlying pulmonary contusion. Contused lung is very sensitive to fluid overload, thus treatment includes fluid restriction and use of diuretics. Pulmonary dysfunction may develop, thus blood gases have to be monitored. If a respirator is needed, bilateral chest tubes are advisable to prevent tension pneumothorax from developing. The multiple broken ribs may have punctured the lung. To get a flail chest big trauma required, thus traumatic transection of the aorta must be actively sought. In which we will have short videos about important topic in medicine. But please do not forget to like, share our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel number one doctor, and join our social media accounts in the links below each video. Pulmonary contusion can show up right away after chest trauma with deteriorating blood gases and white out of the lungs on chest x-ray, or it can appear up to 48 hours later, thus it is one of those hidden injuries that has to be monitored for. Myocardial contusion should be suspected in sternal fractures. ECG monitoring will detect it. Troponins are quite specific. Treatment is focused on the complications, such as arrhythmias. Traumatic rupture of the diaphragm shows up with bowel in the chest, by physical exam and x-rays always on the left side. All suspicious cases should be evaluated with laparoscopy. Surgical repair is typically done from the abdomen. Traumatic rupture of the aorta is the ultimate hidden injury. It happens at the junction of the arch and the descending aorta, requires big deceleration injury, and is totally asymptomatic until the hematoma contained by the adventure blows up and kills the patient. Suspicion should be triggered by the mechanism of injury, knowing that the patient suffered severe deceleration injury, or by the presence of fractures in chest bones that are very hard to break, first rib, scapula, or sternum, or by the presence of wide mediastinum. Non-invasive diagnostic tests include transesophageal echocardiography, spiral CT scan, or MR angiography. In the trauma setting, the most practical of these is TE spiral CT scan which is enhanced by intravenous dye and thus is also known as CT angio. As in other areas of vascular surgery, repair of these is now done, whenever possible, with endovascular prosthesis rather than open thoracotomy. Traumatic rupture of the trachea or major bronchus is suggested by developing subcutaneous emphysema in the upper chest and lower neck, or by a large air leak from a chest tube. Chest x-ray confirms the presence of air in the tissues 
and fiber optic bronchoscopy identifies the lesion and allows intubation to secure an airway beyond the lesion. Surgical repair follows. Differential diagnosis of subcutaneous emphysema also includes rupture of the esophagus, but the usual setting is after endoscopy and tension pneumothorax, but in the latter the other findings, shock and respiratory distress, are far more alarming and deadly. Air embolism should be suspected when sudden death occurs in the chest trauma patient who is intubated and on a respirator. It also happens when the subclavian vein is open to the air, supraclavicular node biopsies, central venous line placement, CVP lines that become disconnected, also leading to sudden collapse and cardiac arrest. Immediate management includes cardiac massage, with the patient positioned with the left side down. Prevention includes the Trendelenburg position when the great veins at the base of the neck are to be entered. Fat embolism may be seen in multiple trauma patients with several long bone fractures. They develop pedicure rashes in the axilla and neck. Present with fever, tachycardia, and low platelet count. And eventually become a full-blown picture of respiratory distress with hyposemia and bilateral patchy infiltrates on chest x-ray. Treatment is respiratory support using a respirator. Rarely, fat droplets may reach the brain, producing unexpected coma. A Starfield pattern on MRI is diagnostic. Spontaneous resolution is possible, and thus one should not rush to declare irreversible damage and withdraw further care. Thanks for watching our video and hope to see you again in next videos. Do not forget to see other videos in our channel. With my best wishes. Dr. 8 Fomid.